How'd that homework go with the uh, inequalities? Good, good. good. Chicken pot pie. All right. Um, so it was page 112, worksheet 115, right? Is that about? No. No? No. What do you mean no? There was no. No, I, I gave you like one page just to kind of start on. And I'll go over it. All right, so problem one and two, you are just solving the inequality. It's a one-dimensional inequality because there's one lever. Does that make sense? Um, so problem number one, just go through them quickly. So I mean, if you have a question on it. Uh, and problem number two is this. That's a 4x. Um, so this first one, I would add 4 to both sides, divide by 3. And on this one, I would subtract 3x from both sides. Subtract 3. So uh, this particular one, I have 0 here, I have 4 here, I have an open dot, and I'm shading this way. Okay. Why is it an open dot? Because it's yeah, not an equal sign. And the open dot, if it was two dimensional, meaning an x and y, would mean what kind of line, other than straight? Dotted. Good. Okay. So open dot and dotted line if it's x y. And then this one. Let's see. No, I don't want. I don't need that. That's. I'll do it right here. So I have negative five. I have zero. I have a solid dot here, and I'm shading for regions that are bigger than that. And solid dot would can be what type of line? Solid or dotted, if it was two dimensional. Solid, good. Find it. All right. Uh, next one says use the graph of the inequality 4x minus 2y is less than 12 to answer the following. Oh, okay. So let's see if I can kind of generate this. Graph that they have. So one, two, three, and three, 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 six. All right. So that's basically what they want you to try and answer in the next question. Explain the graph why the point 3, negative 2 is not a solution of the inequality. So 3, 1, 2, 3, and then negative 2. Why is it not a solution to the inequality? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, it's not in that shaded region. In fact, if it actually landed right on the dotted line, it still wouldn't be part of it. Why can I say that? Yeah, if it's, if it's a dotted line, it means you go right up to that line, but you don't include it, so you don't have the equal sign attached to it. So that is not a point because it's not part of the shaded region. Explain using the inequality why the point 3, negative 2 is not a solution to the inequality. Um, well, the same reason as number 3. Which points are solutions? So 0, 5. What do you think, yes or no? Is that a solution to the problem right here? Yeah. Yes. Part of the shaded region definitely is part of one of the answers. Uh, negative 3, negative 4. That one? Yes. Yep. Part of the shaded region. And then 5, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 2. Is that one? No. It's not part of the shaded region, so it's not something we need to use. So we're up through number 5 already. Is that okay? 6 and 7. I can do them both on the same here. Uh, number six, we have y is less than 5x minus 2. And seven, we have this. Um, the first one's already set up in y-intercept form, so we can go ahead and graph it. Uh, let's see, so I get negative 2. And from there, I'm going to go up 5 and over 1. Hey, one thing I noticed, some of you are having problems if it's just a whole number. You have to understand that this is the same thing as 5. 
A lot of you are just going up five and you put another dot right there on line. No, it's five over one. Uh, this is a dotted line. I noticed that when I was grading your quizzes. So take a look. Um, what's a good test point on there? Zero, zero. Why do you feel zero, zero would be really good? Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. So where do you start? Okay, so right here is my start point. So I'm going to go up five. Because the slope. Or why do I start here? Because that's the y-intercept. And remember, the slope, if you have one point established, okay, one point established, the slope, no matter what point you have established, the slope will go in this particular case, up five, right one from any point. So I could be way down here and go up five, right one. I could be up here and go up five, right one, and it would still work. It's just I've established this point as a starting point, how that's set up as a y. Because that's y equals mx plus b, so that means 0, negative 2 has to be a point on the graph. Okay, and th that's your starting point. Does that make sense? So and that goes to the same thing when it's in point slope form where you have like y minus 3, comma, 5, quantity x minus 2. You have the point 3, comma, 2, that's a part of the graph, and then you go from there up your 5, right, 1, or whatever your slope would be. Okay? Um, so we have decided, did I answer your question? Okay. Um, we have decided that 0, 0 right now is a good test point. The reason we can say 0, 0 is a good test point is it's definitely on one side of the line or the other. Agree? Does that make sense? So if I use 0, 0 and plug it in, I'm going to plug 0 is less than 5 times 0 minus 2. So that's going to be 0 is less than 0 minus 2, so that's 0 is less than negative 2. Is this true or false? This gives me a false scenario. So that means everything over here that I try to pick would give me a false answer. What does it give me on the other side of the line? Yeah, everything over here is true. If everything over here is true, that means I need to shade this side. And that becomes my region that <coughs> works out. Does that make sense? Uh, the next problem is not set up in slope-intercept form. It's set up to where we could use a particular method. How would you want to go on this one? Cover method. So I get 2x equals 12. So x equals 6. And this is my x-axis. So I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, negative 3y equals 12, so this is my y-axis. So what is y equal to if negative 3y is equal to 12? Negative what? Negative 4? Solid or dotted line? Solid because we have that, so that's going to say that mean it's solid. Solid, I can spell. A good test point? Zero, zero. Zero, zero is definitely up here. Okay, so plug in our values, zero, 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0. Is that greater than or equal to 12? So is 0 greater than or equal to 12? Is that true or false? false. 0 is not. So that means everything on this side is false. So what's everything down here going to be? So everything true, I want the true region to be shaded in. And again, you don't have to be the kid that colors it in completely. Want to go ahead, but if you're the kid that takes longer on a test, you spent 15 minutes coloring it in. It's kind of hard for me to feel sorry for you, though I think it's a pretty picture that your, your shading capabilities are great. <laughs> okay, um, if you have your notebooks, go to page 113. If you don't have your notebook. Scoot over to where by somebody who does have it, and let's talk about it. So, page one thirteen. This is uh, this is one of the things that I said inequalities deal a lot with the business industry. Okay, um, so the bottom line of running a business is to make money. Do you agree? Like, people didn't go and open a business saying, man, I hope we're bankrupt in 30 days. Right? I mean, maybe they did. I don't know. But I'll tell you something about those businesses is they aren't going to make it. 
you know, bankrupt business isn't going to continue to have any type of success. So a business is going to take some sort of, you know, model of the capacity of space they have, or they even go with shelving space. Um, in fact, I don't know if you've been to a grocery store lately. Why do they have the kids' cereal on the very bottom shelf of the grocery store and not on the very top shelf? So the kids can get to it. So the people who run the stores and the, and the, the, the cereal companies say, hey, store, I'll give you extra money if you make sure my cereal is on that bottom shelf. Especially if it's that thing. Now, if you got, you know, granola with bran, you know, it has like cardboard with carpet, you know, mixed in with it. <laughs> It's, uh, it's not probably going to sell to a kid as easily as uh, blueberry cereal, right? You know the one who's like, it's real blueberries. Then you eat a real blueberry going, it tastes nothing like that cereal. So, you know, unfortunately, in life, we've, uh, we've been subjected to things going, hey, I like grape lollipop. You're eating a grape lollipop, then you eat a grape later, and you're like, pretty disappointed about it. That grape lollipop really tasted like a better tasting grape than that grape grape tasted. Grape well, there is. It's a better grape. Or the grape, you know, when they give you cough medicine, it's like, oh, it's grape. And you taste it, and you're like, that. I've never tasted a grape that had any grape. Grape soda. G R A P E. Grape cough medicine. I've never tried that. It's like, it's natural. I've never tried that. Okay, so cherry, so cherry is great. Cherry is great. Yes, and then you get confused as a child going, so I have a yellow or a green grape, and that's purple. I can't have purple or red grape, okay? Don't judge me. So, the long and the short of it. So on page 113, it talks about a company had purchased 60 seconds of radio, or 600 seconds of radio advertising time for one day. Okay, the short advertisement lasts 15 seconds, and the longer one lasts 20 seconds. Any used, unused time can be used on future days. The inequality related to this type of advertisement relates to this. So. They're giving us this equation. This is the equation they're giving us. Now, do you understand the context of this? I realize most of you listen to XM radio, or and you don't have commercials, or you listen to your iPod, which you already have the pre-slugged music, so you don't really have commercials. But there was a time when people used to advertise on the radio station, and that's how the radio paid for themselves in order to go. It's the same thing as television, but I realize today's day, we don't really have commercials on TV because if you don't have a TiVo or some sort of thing to record shows that you can flash forward through everything, then you watch it on the Netflix or the Hulu or any of the other things that come, come to you, right? And, you know, it becomes quite disappointing when you get used to watching a television show without commercials, and then you're like, all right, I can watch the live version of this, and you know, I only have 15 minutes worth of commercials that are breaking up your hour-long show, and you're like, ooh, time out. This isn't yeah. fair. Like, the agent. Sutter, Sutter, Sutter's going to call both retiring Yep. <clears throat> so, but the long and the short of it comes to, if you were to buy a certain amount of advertising space, you are actually paying for that television station or that radio station in order to stay on the air. Um, and you know, contrary to most beliefs, a TV show is not free to produce. The movie more, more than a movie. How do they pay for a movie if there's no advertisements during the movie? People buying. 
people buying tickets, right? Now they could lower the price of a movie if you watched commercials. Now they they kind of suckered in there. Now they have like you know advertisements before the movie starts. And then you already paid 10 bucks to go watch the movie. You paid $16 for a popcorn, but don't worry, you get a free refill. If you get a large. And then you got you got a soda that's big enough, you know, to take care of, you know, half a nation of Africa if they needed to drink something. But it's like, I got her thing, and you sit down, and you got the guy who makes this sound when he's eating the popcorn. So like, he's like, dude, I got free refills. <laughs> that was me. I'm so Oh yeah, yeah, that's you know like they say it's not allowed, they don't actually have supervisory what's going on with the theater. Yeah, but you go over to the Alamo oh, movie theater over on Santa Fe. So nice. Boom, they inject beer. I watched the guy bust it out. This will Lights up, boom, sir, he needs to leave. Boom, escorted out, no refund. I'm like, good, yeah, gonna stay ever. Wow. It was incredible. Well, I, I totally, I totally recommend this place. Like, if you yeah, want to go on your cell phone, you go over to the AMC 24 over there off Broadway, and that's good. You know, enjoy it all day long. You won't see me there, because I don't like it. I pay the extra buck and a half per ticket to go to the Alamo joint. If you talk, eject it. You use your cell phone, eject it. It's beautiful. I'm that guy. I'm that guy going, I want to be immersed in this movie. I don't need to hear your side conversation. I don't need to see that you're the most popular person and you're following Justin Bieber on Twitter. I can care less because I'm there to watch a movie. Right? Now, if y'all are the ones that are going through I got to see what the Beeps is doing, good for you. Happy for you. Do it during the movie that out at the Alamo. I'm going to watch it go bye-bye. And I will throw popcorn at you. Yeah. That's the best part of the movie. <laughs> All right. There you go. So, let's read this question one more time. I have everything up there. It says, a company purchases 600 seconds of radio advertising time. So, the 600 seconds is there. And the combination between this and this have to be less than or equal to 600 seconds. Okay, now, this X represents the short commercial, and this 20 second is the long commercial. So a 15 second is a short commercial. The 20 second, you're like, dude, it's 20 whole seconds. Five more seconds. So that's long commercial. So this is how they are going to do it. So this is set up that you could use the cover method in order to figure out where it crosses the x and y axis. Now, we're not going to be worried about the negative region of the x and y axis. Why do you think? Can I have a negative amount of seconds for my advertising? No. No. Yeah. Why would it in a day? Oh. In a whole day, not a whole day. So 24. I can't see very well. You want to move up? You can have a comfy seat if you want. It's kind of like awkward comfy. No, but I mean right here. Oh. I can't see very well. oh, I got you. Um, so, yeah, it's for the whole day. All right, so if I were to use the cover method and I had 15x equals 600, it's what? 40? And if I were to cover this, 20y equals 600, which is 30. Is it a solid or a dotted line? Solid? Or? It's solid. Okay. Now, anything below this line is your shadable region. Okay. But again, I'm not coming all the way down into the negative region because I'm not going to have a negative amount of advertisement or time. Okay? So the next thing says interpret both the x and the y intercepts. So the x intercept is 40. So I could do how many 15 second commercials? What does this mean? What does this mean? I could do how many 15 second commercials? I could do. So this company should say, I want to do 40 short commercials throughout the day. What does the y-intercept interpret here? Uh, about 30 would be long. So I could do 30 long advertisements through the day. 
So some companies might say, hey, you know what? We prefer to do the 40 spread out throughout the day. It's better for us. You know, theoretically, someone, when you catch somebody on a commercial, more often, gives you 10 more times. Other companies might say, you know what? We want to get our whole message across to those listening. So that 20 second slot is going to get us more information. Um, which of the following ordered pairs are possible? So 10, 25, 10, 25, maybe, um, 20, 15, that looks like it'll work, and then 15, 15, 15, 15. So I might not have drawn it perfect. I might not draw it perfect. So how could I double check to see if these points are truly part of the feasible region? Plug it back in, good. Okay, so the first one is 10 comma 25. So if I plug this into here and it becomes less than or equal to 600, it totally works. So 15 times 10 is 150, I believe, plus 20 times 25 is? 20, how much? 20 times 25? 20 times 25. Quit yelling out arbitrary answers. 500. Is it 500? 500? Press and quit. Is that less than or equal to 600? Is 150 plus 500 less than or equal to 600? No, so this won't work, okay? This is not true, so this couldn't have happened. Now, I realize how I have it drawn, it appears it's falling right on the line. Did I use rulers to draw my line? No, I just freehanded it. So how would I double check the other points to see if they are also working? 20 comma 15, that's an X and Y component. Shh. So 15 times 20 is, I believe, 300. And then 20 times, 20 times 15 is 300 as well. Is that a true statement? Yeah. This actually falls right on the line. So if I had drawn it correctly, it would have fallen right on the line. Hey, why, if it falls right on the line, is it part of the solution to this answer? It's what? It's not oh, you nailed it. It's not dotted. So the line is part of the solution because it's not dotted in this case. And then 15 comma 15, again, if I wanted to see if this one worked, if I plug 15 comma 15 in, 15 times 15 is 225, uh, plus uh, 20 times 15 is 300. Is that indeed less than 600? So that's 525. 525 is less than or equal to 600 totally works. So the 10 comma 25 doesn't work, the 20 15 does, and the 15 comma 15 does. Identify the feasible domain and range. Okay, let me do this. So the, do the domain goes with what value? X or Y? What do you think? It goes with the X. So this is the domain here. We're talking about this region right here. So where does it look like it starts? Where does it look like my domain starts? Zero. Where does it look like my domain ends to stay within the feasible region? 40. It starts at zero, it ends at 40. So my domain is going to go from zero to 40. Now, I have square brackets on this. Could I have zero of the X, which are the short commercials? Could I choose to do zero of them? Yes. I could. Could I choose to go all the way up to 40 of the short commercials? Yes. So I include my endpoints as a square bracket. Now my range is here. And range goes with the Y. So where does it appear the range starts? Zero, zero and goes to 30. And I'm going to put it in square brackets again. Let's see if we can make this make sense. Can I have zero long commercial? 
Yes. Can I have 30 of them? Yes. So the my domain and range are just exact. Feel okay about that? Feeling all right? All right, all right. All right. Let's practice some of these graphs and we'll come back to do the other one. So, how would I graph this? Huh? Cover. Cover. Okay. So, we're going to look at cover on this one. How would I graph this one? Slope intercept form, okay? So this is slope intercept. So um, the cover method, I could indeed solve my entire equation for y and put it in slope intercept form. And those are extra steps. I don't think it's worth doing. Okay? So let's do this on the cover method real quick. Okay, if I cover up 2y, negative 3x equals 30. So what does x have to equal? Negative 10, that's my x axis. So I have negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Good. Uh, if I cover up my 3x, I have 2y equals 30, so y is equal to 15. I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Would this be a solid or a dotted line? Solid. Solid. And, a, and this one, we can indeed have negatives, because we're not talking about a bounded region. Um, a good test point for this problem, you would feel, would be 0, 0. 0, 0 is definitely down here. If I plug 0, 0 in and it works, that means that 0 is less than or equal to 30. Is that true or false? That's true. True. So that means everything down here is true. So if everything down here is true, I'm going to shade this region down here. What is everything above the line going to be then? False. False. Do I shade the false? No. No. Okay. So you have a cover method you might have to use on some, and then others might be set up as slope-intercept form. Mr. Kruger, you had asked about this before. Okay. Let's see if we can walk through it real quick. What would you feel my y-intercept would be on this problem? Uh, would it be 2 over 1 is my slope? Well, that's my slope. I agree with you so very much. So that's 2 over 1 is my slope. Okay, Almost? Negative. There you go. So don't forget that. So negative 6. Okay. Mr. Kruger. Yes. My slope, you identified as 2 over 1. Agree? Yeah. Still with me? What point am I going to start counting from to go up to and write one? Okay? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me rephrase that. Maybe you just understood. What point would you like me to start counting with the slope to find a second point for this line? Negative six. six. Sounds good. Casey helped it nicely. So from this point that we've established, I'm going to go up to, write one. And theoretically, I go up to and write one and up to and write one and keep going. Okay? It's going to go forever and ever and ever. And that's how I'm going to do that problem. Uh, Gage, do you think uh, zero, 0, would be an appropriate test point on this problem? Why is that? Yeah, the line doesn't go through 0, 0. So let's plug it into the works. I'm going to get 0 is greater than 2 times 0 minus 6. 0 is greater than 0 minus 6. Is 0 greater than negative 6? Yeah, that's, that's true. This is totally true. That means everything up here is true. So where it's true, what should I do? Shade it. What's all of the stuff down here going to be then? False. False. Do I shade false? No. No. Okay. Feel okay with those so far? All right, let's go back to page 114. The word problem it says a backpacker. Oh, this is an adventure. We got a story. A 
backpacker starts a difficult one-day trip with 20 pints of water. Every hour he will drink two or more pints of water. If Y represents the pints of water remaining and X re represents the hours backpacking and the inequality, we get Y equals negative 2X plus 20 would model this situation. Use the inequality to answer the following. Okay. All right, so are you guys involved with this story? You got a guy, little dude, he's happy. He's got a backpack right there with a lot of water in it. H2O, for those chemists out there, you can also call it HOH. It's just called hydrogen hydroxide. Hydrogen hydroxide is also water. But that's new information. You don't really need it for this adventure, right? It is. But it's the guy with the backpack. But I'm not an artist. See, it's over in the IC building. They got better rights. But I'm not that guy. So. Thank you. And the fine arts, right? All right. So this uh, this graph, we're going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, And I drew it real equal. Sorry, I'm not that good. All right, so it says, it says that this is the equation we're going to use to graph our line. And we're actually going to make it look like this because we have a shaded region we're going to deal with. Okay? This backpacker, are they going to go on the hike without water? Well, if they're dumb, dumb, maybe. But theoretically, the person is prepared. They have brought themselves 20 pints of water. Huh? Why not milk? Because there's nothing better than that hot day milk burp. This is 18 pounds. All right. So. So, here's my water, and here is my water, and this is my amount of hours that I'm going to backpack, okay? This cat's going to drink 20 pints of water during this outing. Now, of course, if they stand there and they look up at the mountain, they're like, sweet, I got 20 pints of water, and they say... Let's chug it all. Good for them. That just means that just means that a nature break is going to take place a little sooner than later on the nature trail, right? Or they're going to drown. No, they die. Well, they could. All right. So I'm going to go down to. Hey, if this was counted by twos, if I go down to, I just go down one region here and go over one. What do you think? Yeah. And if I go down to and over one. So, I think that might be done right. Um, kind of, maybe. Did I graph it right or no? No. Um, you know what? You know where it's actually going to cross at? Right there, which is actually going to be a point ten comma zero. zero. It looks like some other number. I know. Deal with it. All right, so it's going to cross there. So it looks like if that x, let me see what it going to ask. Interpret the x-intercept in the context of this problem. So if this person were to do that uh, 20 pints, drink 2 pints per hour, this person could technically hike for 10 hours and have their water. Right? Not going to walk 10 hours? Well, I'm just saying. Just, I mean, if it's The Walking Dead and he had 20 pints of water, he's trying to get away from the zombies. That, <laughs> greatest show ever. You might, 
You might, because if you don't drink enough water, you're going to be guy and become a zombie yourself. Take that back. Yeah, but then after you die, then you become the, the zombie. And then you gotta get more water. But if you stay alive and they catch you, they eat you. And then you don't become a zombie because you become dinner. How many zombies? Ooh. All right. So, ah, uh, so that's the kind of three comma thirty. Oh, this is the region down here that we're dealing with. Okay. 3 comma 13, 3 comma 13. Does that appear to be part of the region? <coughs> How would I know? Again, I just freehand drew it. It's not the best drawing ever. Plug it in. So let's plug in those values. I'm going to get 13 is less than or equal to negative 2 times 3 plus 20. So that's 13 is less than or equal to negative 6 plus 20. So 13 is less than or equal to 14. Is that true or false? Yes. 13 is less than 14? Yes. So is this part of our solution set? Yes. Yep. It works. So that means, um, yeah, that works. Uh, is the order pair 8, 12? 8, 12. I don't know. I might not have drawn it perfectly, but I think 8, 12 is definitely outside of a region. Nah. I, but I might be wrong. If we weren't quite sure, I would plug 8 in for x, I'd plug 12 in for y. It's probably going to give us a false information. And state the domain and the range. So the domain is ours. The domain is going to go from 0 to 10. And the range is going to go, so that's the domain. And the domain has to be for the x, and the x happens to be for the hours because they told us. And the range is going to go from 0 to 20, and that's a range, and so that's the y, and the y happens to represent the y. There we go. Square brackets, because I can drink all my water, or I can drink none of it, and anything in between. Uh, no way. <laughs> I wouldn't drink water. <laughs> I go on high street and sold them. Yeah. Wait, what? X intercept? I can hide the maximum of 10 hours with the water given if I consume it at that rate. And this is assuming you don't find a natural resource of water. That's it. But if you find a natural resource of water and then you buy it, it becomes a magic that's good. Usually dysentery takes anywhere from 6 to 8 hours to interact. So if you continue on your long walk and then all of a sudden you're excreting your information quicker than you are ingesting it, means you've got diarrhea. I think this goes along with when you guys ask me about what's the colon for. Did you absorb moisture? No, it's not. It's for brown all right, I'm done talking. What do you guys think? Yes. Yes. Yay! Thank goodness. Homework. Homework is worksheet sixteen. Which is page one fifteen. 116. Got it? Hey, so guys and girls, I know that uh, 